Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business of Business podcast. I'm your host, Roy. Of course, we are the uh, podcast that brings you a wide variety of guests uh, that could talk about a wide range and diverse set of topics. We want to help our small business people, our solopreneurs, entrepreneurs. We want to point things out that you may not even be aware of exist, but we also want to try to help you with some existing problems. So uh, today we've got an awesome guest I've been waiting for a week or so to talk to. i uh, excited. It's Curtis Boyd. He is with Objection.co.co. And um, I'm going to let, first off, before we get into what Curtis does, I'm going to let him tell his story. It's such an interesting one. I didn't want to take a chance on reading it and not having the right flavor. So I've asked him just to tell a story. I think it's, it's an awesome story. So Curtis, welcome to the show. And thanks so much for taking time out of your day to be here. Sure, sure. Thanks for having me, Roy. Yeah, uh, yeah my story is a fun one. It starts about nine years ago. Uh, I was a nursing assistant working in a hospital, and you know, I bathed patients. I took care of them. I fed them. I, I took care of people who couldn't take care of themselves. Bottom of the food chain. And uh, that being said, uh, one day a doctor came onto the unit, and he started complaining about uh, a bad review that he just got. And I was in a bad mood, kind of, you know, so I started complaining about my student loans and we kind of got a laugh about it. And, uh, you know, he he kind of sarcastically said, well, you know, if you can you can get this bad review off, I'd pay for your student loans. And I was like, I kind of rolled my eyes at him and I was like, well, doctor, like this is, you know, I owe about thirty two thousand dollars. He rolled his eyes right back at me and he (laughs) said, I probably lost one hundred and fifty thousand dollars just this week from this bad review. He's like, you know. I, I charged ten to fifteen thousand dollars a surgery, and I lost fifteen consults at least that I could count this week because of this bad fake review. And he's like, "So Curtis, I'm not joking. If you can remove it, I'll I'll take care of your student loans." So, so I was like, "Wow." Uh, at the time, you know, I I was a nursing assistant. I didn't know about business. I didn't know about contracts. I didn't know how the exchange of money worked in exchange for you know services or goods. Um, but anyway, my mom worked at the hospital at the same time. She, she vouched once. She said she knew who he was and he was a good guy. So if he said it, he was probably good to go. Uh, you know, the, uh, the next day I called his, 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 his office, you know, his private office and verified with his assistant, you know, the secretary that, um, you know, I just wanted to make sure like that we're, we're good. If I could, <laughs> if I could really do this for him, he'd really, he'd really pay that amount. And she was telling me, you know, how he had hired lawyers, how he hired marketing consultants and, and reputation guys and no one was able to help him. And so I was like, okay, I'm on the case. Like we don't need to sign anything. I, I don't know anything about this. I'm just, I, I, I challenge accepted because I knew it would take me probably two to three years of nonstop saving to make that kind of money. Right. Yeah. To just all at once have that kind of fun, that, that kind of money. So I was like, okay, let's do this. Uh, 24, 48 hours of me banging my head against the wall, trying to do everything I could that I knew, like, I failed miserably, right? <laughs> I, I, I was like, I'm computer literate. I'm, I'm competent on, on computers. I'm sure I could figure it out. Got nowhere. Um, I, uh, I had about $800 in my bank account at the time. I bought an airplane ticket to San Francisco to stake out employees that worked at a certain company. And I, I literally hung outside the building and I would ask people walking around the building, hey, I'm sorry, excuse me, do you, do you work at this company here? Do you, do you work there? Um, no, no, no. I don't need any money. I need to know. <laughs> Can you help me remove a bad review? I've got a doctor in Los Angeles. He's got a fake review. I'm trying to remove it for him. I need help. Uh, and then, uh, you know, no, no, I'm sorry. I can't help you. Can't help you. Um, you know, I did that for three days. I did that for three days, hundreds wow. of people. And I felt like a crazy person because I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was a young kid just trying to solve a problem. I was 20, 23 years old at the time. Um, pretty much broke, just desperate to try and solve this problem for this doctor. Anyway, on the third day, I met a, a, a girl at the time. Uh, she worked in this in the very specific department at that company, and she took me to a, a Starbucks. It was right down the street, and she sat down with me, and she took about 20 minutes of her time that changed my life. She she wrote step by step. She she instructed me what to do on how to get that illegitimate review removed from the site. And I, I implemented it that night, and about 48 hours later, I had a check for $32,000. Wow. And a, and a physician who started raving about me, right? 
Uh, he was on the board of directors for that entire physician network. So within a week, he had referred me to almost 670 doctors, right, for the whole <laughs> medical center. He taught me how much to charge per month. He, he set me up with a bookkeeping CPA guy. And before I know it, I'm running an online reputation practice uh, disputing illegitimate reviews for, for doctors. One reputation, you know, one, one physician network turned to five or six over a few years. And before you know it, I, I had a I had a thriving business. I, I ended up um, going back to school. You know, I heard that AI was going to replace our jobs. You know, that AI was going to take yeah. over, right? And I was like, well, you know, if AI is going to replace me, I may as well be the one to to build it. So I st- I got I went back to school to learn how to code, and I started a software company that could look at reviews the same way that I do that could look at reviews and make a determination if they qualify for removal based on all my years of knowledge and doing this as a service for so many, for so many businesses. And that's exactly what objection.co does objection.co does. Um, we use technology not only to identify illegitimate reviews at scale, but to actually do all the fulfillment at scale. So to write out these uh, letters and disputes and flags to the administrators at all these different review sites, Wow. Um, and that way computers gets to focus on fulfillment while, while I get to focus with my sales team on growing the yeah. business. Well, that is such an awesome story. <clears throat> you talk about being, you know, in the right place at the right time, but also listening to somebody's problem and thinking, Hey, you know what? I could solve that problem. So, <laughs> I mean, what a success story. I, mean, I didn't know if I could, I, I just <laughs> knew that if I could, if I actually did it, like, if I really was able to solve this for him, I would. I was going to have all this money. I didn't know yeah. what I was going to do with that money, but I was going to have it at least, right? Right. Um, and for me, that that opportunity, I, I just couldn't pass up. It was too big yeah. of an opportunity. Like I took, I took weeks, and I, you know, finally took the courage to say, you know what? Like I'm not. I can, I need help, and I don't know who can help me. I've called everyone I could think of. I've called, you know, all the people willing to talk to me. I need to go, I need to go there and I need to do it. And so I ended up just doing it and it (laughs) it ended up panning out. Yeah. And perseverance too. That's it. You know, sticking with it. So that's awesome. So um, let's just talk about how big of a problem this is before we go too much further. I mean, because it, it is a problem, but how big of a problem would you estimate this to be? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, in 2020, 2020, Google on their blog published that they removed 55 million illegitimate reviews off Google Maps. Wow. And that's just Google, right? That's not Yelp. That's not TripAdvisor. So Google had 55 million fake reviews on their platform. It's a huge problem. Uh, you know, a lot of illegitimate reviews um, you know, a lot of competitors, unfortunately, are paying these astroturfers overseas to defame their com- their local comp- their local competition because mm-hmm. they want to outrank them, right? They wanna they wanna have a higher star rating. They wanna have more, you know, they wanna be be look better online than their competitors. Yeah. And for those for those business owners who you know don't have you know, any ethical dilemma doing that, they're getting away with it right now too. Yeah. They are, they're, you know, they're, they're spending money hand over fist on these fake reviews. Wow. Yeah. And it's, I mean, that's a, probably a hefty estimate, but you know, just for your doctor alone, $150,000. And he said that was in the last week that it cost him that. That's right. That's right. He thought that in his private practice, he probably lost 150 grand that wow. week. So, um, you we, know, so we can multiply about half that times is 55 million and that's an astronomical <laughs> number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't know doctors made that, you know, I didn't know, uh, cosmetic surgeons made that kind of money. Yeah. turns out they do. Yeah. And, uh, it, it, it opened my eyes to the world a little bit, you know, working as a nursing assistant, yeah. you know, making, you know, 11, $11 an hour and change learning that some people make 150 K a week. Yeah. Right. Oh, why widen wide your eyes a little bit yeah so um how do first off let's talk about how do we tell if we do have a bad review is this something that we should be looking through I, i'm because i don't know i'm sure the google maps i don't know if you you know if you have the account if you get 
dinged if I mean like you get a an alert if you get a review on that or what do what should people do to help themselves here? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you're when you're getting your business started, it's really recommended that you get all your listings set up, right? Mm -hmm. Um, that includes your Google My Business, that includes your Yelp profile, that includes a lot of other social profiles that are out there um, that's really good for your local SEO, right? Yeah. And, and, and it's not just for the, rec like the notifications, which are great once they start coming in, but, but really to get your online presence really set up. Right. Um, there's a list of about, I'd say, 300 directories that you want to get your business on oh, wow. that have the, the NAP data, the name, the address, and the phone number. You can you Google a phrase like uh, business directory listings uh, list, you know, the ultimate business directory list, right? <laughs> right? And you can you can just do it one by one yourself or you could hire a freelancer to fill them all out for you. But um, but that's certainly an important thing. And once you do claim your business, your, you know, once you do get your business on Google My Business and once you do get your Yelp listing set up, you want to claim it, make sure you're the admin and that, well, that way you receive all the notifications anytime there's any type of engagement, whether it's a review or someone's messaging you, um, you know, and uh, they'll notify you for sure. Yeah. But uh, also what I recommend setting up are Google alerts. These are uh, Google alerts also will notify you anytime uh, someone creates an article or someone creates a Google post about you either by your, your name as a keyword or your business as a keyword, and you'll be notified via email anytime it hears something about you. It's like okay. a social, a free social listening tool. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome advice. And so, you know, we talked a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, in our initial conversation, uh, as you go through time, something's going to happen. And I look at I look at the reviews as a good thing, legitimate reviews. Let me clarify. I look at legitimate reviews as a good thing because I can't always monitor every piece of my business. So if some something else is not happening right, it may clue me in that here's a process or an employee or here's something that needs fixing that I can actually get a handle around. And so, you know, we talk about... Um, we need to engage with that review, let people know, hey, sorry. And this is a it's a delicate technique because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to start a firefight with, I don't know, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, we didn't do this. You just because all of a sudden now you've just taken a little kernel of something that could be fixed and you've really blown it into this big bonfire. Whereas if you address it, say, hey, sorry, we're fixing it. What can I do to make it right? That really shows to a lot of other people that, um, you know, you've got your stuff together. So can you comment on that? Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you get a bad review, the first thing you got to do is figure out who's it from, right? Like, well, who is this person and what's their relationship to my business? Right. Uh, if, it, if it's from a customer who had a personal consumer experience with you guys, they have every right to review you, right? Yeah. And every reason to review you because they had a, an experience with you, whether it was good or bad. Um, anyone else it kind of goes along the lines of maybe they shouldn't be on there, right? Right. right. But uh, for, for, yeah, for the for when for if your business that gets a legitimate review from a customer who's unhappy, yeah, the first thing you want to do is uh, privately, you know take the conversation offline and try to provide a secondary experience, roll out that red carpet, do whatever you can to provide a secondary experience that inspires them to come back online and say, you know what, they screwed up, but I'm really, really, uh, you know, I, I, I'm really excited that the business owner did this, this, and that for me. He really cared. Right. I was really shocked by how much this company cared. And I'm so glad that they were able to take care of this for me because mm -hmm. when at, like for me personally uh, in the reputation space, if I'm going to hire an expensive consultant or an expensive roofer or solar per company, like doesn't matter what they do. If I see a one star turned into a five star right off the bat, I know that that company cares about customer satisfaction. Right. And I know that if they screw up, they'll at least try to make it right. Right, right. Yeah. And so, you know, that's pretty, uh, pretty simple philosophy for legitimate, you know, when they, when we can trace them back to the, yes, they were a customer, they did business. But so let's talk about this illegitimate factor, because I, I guess the reality and I'm not that big of a raider I mean I've gone out and give some uh, good reviews when I've had superior service or it needed it but can I just get on 
anybody's uh, can I just review anybody's service or, you know, I guess you know, let's take the local restaurant up here. I could just jump on there and give them a negative review without ever having stepped in their door. Technically can, but it, it, the review may, you know, violate the content guidelines, right. Or the terms of service of a given review site. Okay. So, you know, whether it's a community member who, you know, participates on that site or a moderator or an administrator, they can flag your content and remove it. Um, based on what your review says. Now, if you, well, you know, what what happens a lot of the times is people who kind of know how the review sites work, even though they never had an experience with a company, in their in the content they'll say that they did, right? They'll they'll lie and they'll say, you know, what? I hired these guys and they were horrible, yada yada yada. So when the administrators look at it, the administrators are going, why do you want us to remove it? It says that that they worked with you and it says that. They had a real, like a, a legitimate experience with you. Like that looks legitimate. Why do you want us to remove it? Right. And even though it's completely fake. So that's, right. that's when business owners then will come find a company like ours and say, Hey, look, like we're, we're having trouble here. We get two to three reviews a week for the last month and a half like this. It, you know, we were at 4.5 star an hour, like three, six. And it's hurting our sales team. Like our sales team's getting killed. Like objection after objection is lining up. Like their customers are afraid to work with us. And Google or or whom, whatever site isn't removing them. Like they're they're not listening. Like they they're they're not agreeing with us. They're not doing anything about it. And we're 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 I feel like we're starting to go under. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, the other thing I was going to ask quickly now. Do you target the the services like the Googles and the uh, the Yelps, or let's just say for me, I've got a, you know a blog. If I just wrote in that uh, I had terrible service from X Y Z company, do y'all pick that up as well, or is this mostly confined to the uh, rating sites? So yeah, sites like Google and Yelp uh, are really. Um, our, our main point of focus because okay. it includes content and the star rating okay. and it involves a business. Okay. Um, you know, as a B2B SaaS company, that's our, that's our main point of focus is helping businesses with their online reputation. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, sure. There's like forums and review sites, you know, like piss consumer and, and what have you, where you can complain about businesses, but it doesn't include a star rating. It okay. just gives you a, pl- a, a, you know, a place to rant and write about your experience. Okay. As, as like a, an article. And I guess those, the other uh, significant difference I'm speculating here is that I could write a blog about anything. The chances of that local consumer actually seeing it are probably pretty small. Whereas these ratings that you're targeting, when you pull up something on Google, usually they have the ratings that kind of fall right under them. So they are kind of present in your face. Absolutely. Because customers... <laughs> Once they, you know, for once they learn about your business through some, some sort of marketing channel, right. They engage with you, they get a quote. And then before they hand you the credit card, they do research, they do their due diligence. Right. And they, they, if it's not a word of mouth referral and they really trust you and like you, they're going to look at your online reviews, especially if you, what you sell is over $2,500. There's a lot of research that anything above 2500 bucks hmm. that due diligence starts to skyrocket 80 to 90% of consumers wow. are going to do their due diligence if the ticket is more than 2500 bucks so once that happens and your ratings are not so good they're going to scare off your estimates they're going to yeah. scare off all the people you've already invested time pitching and proposing to and your conversion at the bottom of the felt at your sales funnel is going to plummet. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of research um, on, on, on this. Uh, Harvard did a great study as well as Stanford. And what they said is for every star rating you're missing, you can attribute that to nine to 20% of your annual revenue, right? Wow. So if you're missing two stars, that's 20 to 40% of your annual revenue yeah. just gone. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another great uh, reason that we should always follow up and uh, ask our customers, if you're happy and satisfied to, you know, please rate and review us so we can kind of build up those good ones. Because I, I don't know if this is still a good fact or not, but used to, they said, um, customers that were mad at you would tell eight people how bad you were. 
whereas a happy, satisfied customer would tell one. That's right. Yeah. The numbers are even higher. I think it might be 11, but uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know, customers, when they pay for something, they expect it, right? Right. I just gave you money. <clears throat> like you you're, do your job, right? Do do whatever it is I've hired you to do. Right. Thank you. Right. Yeah. And those, that, but that's kind of it. Like, you know, cons- businesses, you know, they want to earn reviews, but uh you know, unless they're really providing outstanding, ex- outstanding experiences, right. they're not going to generate that feedback because customers are like, well, I gave, I paid you like, what more do you want? Oh, you want to <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like that, that, like, I, I'm not, I'm not being like, what am I, what am I getting out of this? Right. 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 So, uh, I'm for, that's why it's so hard to get lots of business reviews. Yeah. And what I try and tell all my customers, um, is that in order to generate five star reviews you know uh they need to generate five star experiences and on top of whatever it is that they took money for that product or service they need to go above and beyond that in order to get that five star review because if you want something extra from your customer you need to give them something extra not money right not like bribing them but a little thing like lots of little things and i can give you an example um you know i was uh I was at a car dealership and I was, I was looking to buy a car. And as soon as I got on the lot, um, you know, they're like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna wash your car and and polish your tires for you, whether you buy a car or not today. And, uh, they did right. Like without asking for anything, like without me purchasing a car, without me leasing anything that, you know, right where I parked the car, they, they took care of, they took care of my car. They did something that they didn't have to do just to, just to make me happy. Right. Just to make my experience better with their dealership. And it worked. Like I, I was like, wow, that's 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 really fantastic. So, I like to encourage business owners to just go above and beyond what it is they were originally hired to do, yeah. if they want to earn five star experiences. Just blow the blow the blow them out of the water. Yeah, that's definitely uh, good advice to get people to uh, to do that. Uh, just because it is so hard to get, you know, like you said, I've exchanged money for a service. So I'm, I'm pretty much as a consumer, I'm done. And if you ask me to do something extra, it's got to be over. We've got to be over uh, normal. So um, it's for myself, you know, working with a handful of clients. I mean, I could tell pretty quickly if it was one of my clients, but you know, let's say the pizza place down the street or a larger business that just has a lot of churn, you know, what is a clue that a review is not from a legitimate customer? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, uh, sometimes they say it like right in the review, like I used to work here and the manager, Uh, Tom is such a, you know, (laughs) this, this, and that, like sometimes they'll just stay in the review and you'll be like, what, like I get like we had like you know, you know when we fired you like you weren't happy like but <laughs> you're not all technically allowed to write a review for us right right those administrators they'll remove that review yeah but um, of course you want to take a look at the content does it sound like like a normal experience because you're you're living and breathing in what your business does you know exactly what type of experiences that right. you're turning out does it does it sound okay like does it sound kind of right um, and then also you want to take a look at the profile like actually click on the profile because on Google and in Yelp, what's really great about these sites, unlike a lot of other sites, you can actually click and do some research on who this person is. Where do they live? Where, what other businesses have they been re- reviewing? If it looks filled out, complete, organic and stuff, most likely it's, it's probably a real person. Yeah. Now, um, the, the con artists are getting better at, at doing a at doing a better job with this, but um, yeah, just spend a minute or two just clicking around to see to see what the behavior of this profile looks like and, and, and try and make a determination for yourself. Yeah, and I have seen where there's been accidents that, you know, for a bigger chain, like I went to, you know, Pizza Place number one and uh, Pizza Place, I reviewed Pizza Place number two accidentally. So it doesn't hurt to go through those and just make sure also that the, it's even your business. And sometimes it just, it's a matter of reaching out and saying, Hey, are you sure it was us? Can you give me some details and see if they'll even respond to you? Most of the time, legitimates probably will. Absolutely. When you message people privately through Google or through Yelp, most real customers will yeah. respond to you. Yeah, absolutely. 
So how long does this process take? Let's just say if, if, if it's me trying to do this versus, uh, y'all, your software is identifying it. And then you said it takes care of a lot of the back end as well. Sending in the, um, I guess the objection letters. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, it takes, um, so from start to finish, when we onboard a new customer, it might take 10 minutes. Oh. Uh, but by the time that the administrators get our, get our dispute letters. Okay. It's pretty, it's pretty fast. Yeah. So yeah. they have to identify their business. We pull all their reviews in our software grades, those reviews, and then they have to just push the one button. They just have to push the dispute button. And then our system gets to work. And usually within, you know, from, from the time that, you know, they, they registered for a free account to the time that an administrator actually gets an email from us, it's, it, it, it could wow. be as fast as 10 minutes. So, Absolutely. So it's going to take me about an hour just to look up who I need to send an email to and hope, hope that I can get, <laughs> hope that I can get it through there too. So th that's pretty amazing that it, it will do it that fast. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible. Um, you know, I think a lot of business owners, you know, uh, just don't have a lot of experience representing themselves, right. whether it's court of law or whether it's with an administrator on one of these review sites. And that's because they don't take the time to learn what are the content guidelines? What does the community of service say? Like, what are the reasons why a review qualifies for removal? Most people have no idea. Yeah. Once you learn about it, you can become more familiar with it. But then, you, you know, it's not just becoming like familiar with the rules. It's also in the in the removal letter itself, yeah. you know, having, having submit thousands and thousands and thousands of, the, of these letters, you know, we know what to say to get them to listen to us, right. To yeah. get them to respond to us in a way that provides a good outcome for our clients. We don't have any special relationship with them, but having experience in doing this for years and years and years, you know, we, we know what, you know, Right. sentence in the right order right language like, to use to get to make yeah. them accountable right yeah, to their yeah. own terms of service otherwise you're going to get a canned answer where they're going to say thanks for reaching out to us we're siding with the reviewer on this one right, right. so yeah it's 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 just a just a matter of uh experience and at this point so how how long does it take for the uh bad review you know once y'all do your thing send it out how long does it take for it to fall off yeah, the fastest I've ever seen it is about 90 minutes. Wow. Uh, and then, yeah, real, real fast, right? So geographically, each each business area has its own uh, set of moderators. So certain certain cities fall within a certain bucket of geography. Uh, and okay. Their, okay. Their, their, their moderators might have a really short queue, and they might get to you right away. Whereas some cities, like right now, Los Angeles, we have some clients who have been waiting almost a week and a half Wow. For just to be, just to get, just to be able to have their, their dispute request looked at. So, um, yeah, depending on, on the city and, and the size of the queue, it could, it could be, you know, up to a week and a half. That's about the longest we've ever seen. Wow. That's still pretty quick. Still pretty quick. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, Curtis. Well, I, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to talk to us about, you know, objection objection.co but also just about the review process and how we can object and you know we have the right if we think that it's uh, fictitious especially if it's not if it's a true legitimate uh review that's poor then the best thing to do of course is reach out try to try to handle that try to make it right because it it will actually it can actually benefit you when other people see that you've turned this review around is there anything else that you want to uh Talk, tell us about before we uh, wrap this up. No, no, I just want to say thanks, for, uh, Roy, for having me on your show. Uh, you if bet. anyone wants to reach out, feel free to reach out on uh, LinkedIn, and uh, I'm I'm on pr I'm pretty active on there. Okay, yeah. So uh, before we go, what is a tool? I mean, uh, besides uh, Objection.co, what is a tool that you use in your daily life that really adds a lot of value to your either business or per personal life? Yeah, yeah. What tool do we or use? Or a habit. It could be a habit. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, let's see here. <laughs> I would have to say either HubSpot, which is an amazing CRM for our business. It, it helps us just stay organized with yeah. everything in our operations. Um, otherwise, I'm going to say Python. And Python is a, uh, 
it's a it's a it's a type of coding that allows us to kind of do anything we want with with computers and uh, data. So. If without without either of those things, I'd be com- pretty much completely okay. lost. Yeah, and I have but, to verify with the. Uh, hu- I'm a hub. I'm a satisfied HubSpot user as well. I think, uh, you know, when I, it's probably been four or five years ago. I trialed like seven, eight, you know, smaller CRMs, and there was nobody that even came close with the tools that they have. So we'll put in a plug for them. Well, one thing I was going to ask. So, uh, like for for me. Uh, you know, smaller clients is one thing, but for like larger clients now, when once they sign up, y'all kind of scan through, y'all keep that scan updated. So the minute something comes through, I guess you notify uh, the your client, and then they can either hit accept, reject, and that starts the process. Yeah, exactly. And okay. they can even get text notifications that they just okay. got it, and they can just hit a button on their on their text message okay. and our system will take start okay. to take care of it so okay. yeah it's uh it's it's pretty cool okay. and that's python that allows us to monitor millions of businesses simultaneously it's okay. a, it's a really really fun tool okay yeah that's what i was thinking i just wanted to double check because you know like somebody that does a high volume that is a godsend just not having to go through all the uh, all your reviews every day on your own so all right. Will y'all reach out to Curtis? Curtis, tell them one more time what's the name of the business and how they can reach out and get a hold of you. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, again, my name's Curtis Boyd. I'm the founder of Objection.co, Objection Co. And uh, you guys can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm, okay. I'm very active on there. I'd be happy to connect. All right. Thanks a lot, Curtis. That's going to do yep. it for another episode of the Business of Business podcast. Of course, I am your host, Roy. Um, you can find us at www.thebusinessofbusinesspodcast.com. We are on all the major social media platforms as well as all the major podcast platforms, Stitcher, uh, Google, Spotify, iTunes. If we're not on one that you use regularly, please reach out. I'd be glad to add it on there for you. So until next time, take care of yourself and take care of your business. Mm-hmm.